So I'd just like to introduce Jimmy Jones Lee, University of Illinois. <laughs> Jimmy uh, Jones. Jimmy Jones, sorry. <laughs> um, so many standards, so many little time, so little time. Um, so I'll just give you two yeah. minutes. Sure, two minutes is great. Yeah. Yeah, I really liked that talk because it made me think, I'm going to be soon to be doctor one of these days. <laughs> I'm a someday to be doctor right now, thank you. So, so yeah, my name is Jimmy Jones. I'm really excited to be here. Um, I'm a doctoral candidate at the University of Illinois. And um, about six months ago, I started doing this uh, research into um, uh, how standards and specifications are developed um, as, in support of my uh, doctoral work. And I'm looking at um, a qualitative analysis of standards development, both the development and the implementation of um, video digitization standards in particular. And this is something that we call a platform study, where I am looking at the technologies being implemented, but also looking at the people who are developing and implementing them too. So there's, there's almost like a little bit of an um, ethnography to the work, you know, as well as a not necessarily a deep dive, but a moderate dive uh, to the, billets of, and the limits of my comprehension into the technology itself too, and kind of how the people and technology work together. So right now I'm still in the data gathering um, slash research phase, um, which will take me through this uh, first academic year until probably the spring, and then I'm looking to start actually writing this thing in about a year. And I've got a couple different research questions that um, kind of broadly constructed are helping me to, to guide the work that I'm doing. And the first is, um, how do power and influence dynamics affect standards development and define the concepts of quality for moving image preservation? And um, this question has kind of a, a number of corollaries that kind of flow from that. So um, one of the things that we're very interested in in the social sciences is this concept of power. Uh, power can be kind of a scary word, I suppose. Power just basically means um, uh, influence and kind of ability to, to do. And so when you, when you have a lot of people come together to develop something like a standard or a specification or best practices or any kind of a document like that, you have multiple different players with, coming from multiple different perspectives and they have different um, kind of agency, they have different maybe levels of stature in their communities um, or in their professions, and sometimes different, um, I suppose different agendas or different things that they want out of whatever they're developing. And the group has to negotiate, you know, which way are they going to go along different vectors within, within the work. And one of the things that I'm really fascinated with, and as I've done some of the interviews already, I've been asking some of my interview subjects, is this concept of, of quality. You know, when we, when we digitize video or anything, I suppose, for preservation purposes, we really want to get the best quality files that we can out of the work that we're doing. And um, one of the things that I'm interested in is, you know, do different kinds of players in these standards development um, from different kinds of backgrounds have different notions of what quality means. So, you know, for an engineer, perhaps, uh, it might be a mathematical. You know, all of the bits are there. I can represent them in this certain way. And, uh, you know, minimal compression is applied to the file when I'm creating it or none or certain different kinds of compression. And so this means quality to me. Whereas librarians, archivists, people who, and, and, and even users, might have a very different kind of conception uh, of what of a quality means. And a quality might be something that's a little more visual, it might have something to do with, you know, does it um, visually represent to me um, some certain kind of aspects um, of, or qualities of, of the original. Um, and, and so how, within these groups, how do people negotiate these different uh, concepts of, of what that means? Um, do the groups have leaders? How are the leaders assigned? Um, what are the power dynamics between the people? Um, uh, and how do we, how do we um, all come together to negotiate these things? And then how are the resultant standards and specifications um, influenced by these concepts of, of, of uh, quality and also the, the different kinds of um, agency of the people within them? You know, which way are these things pulled? And then the second research question um, is more on the implementation side. So the first question is about how these things are developed. Second question is about how are they used? So how are they actually implemented in video preservation slash digitization work? And what factors inform preservation professionals' decisions of which standards to use for video digitization? You know, what are the, what are the metrics that they employ? Um, what are the mandates of their institutions? 
that, that determine you know, what we have to use, what we're allowed to use, what we're not allowed to use. Um, and then um, do the standards under scrutiny, uh, under my scrutiny, work as is, or do they have to be adapted for local practice? Do they tend to be adapted by the people who are using them? So in the data gathering phase, it's been really rewarding so far. I've been doing this for a few months, like I said. I've had several interviews, probably about 14 interviews with um, various different professionals uh, in our realm, many of whom are here today. Um, I have site visits planned for the second research question for the implementation side, people who are using different kinds of standards. Um, and they, they're, the um, site visits are planned for the spring. Indiana University, they have a very large kind of mass digitization um, initiative that they've been uh, they've had underway for a couple of years. And uh, Mike Casey there has been my contact. He's been very supportive of the work. And I'm looking to meet with him in March and see how they do what they do and talk to them about um, uh, how they've made the, the choice in their case to use FFV1 in their high quality preservation. I'm also going to be uh, talking with people at Northwestern University, uh, scene savers, a vendor. I wanted to kind of look at the, the for-profit side, a vendor in uh, Cincinnati who implements um, FFV1 and uh, JPEG 2000. And um, uh, folks at uh, Culpeper in the Library of Congress's facility in Virginia. And as part of the data gathering, I'll be interviewing people, but also looking at their working documents, their guidance documents, um, meeting minutes and notes to the extent that they're willing to make them available to me to see kind of how they, not just how they use the, these different standards, but also what are some of the um, uh, kind of uh, internal dynamics around their choices um, as they developed over time. And one of the things that I had to do kind of early on is I realized that um, the two uh, groups that I wanted to take a look at was what the seller group was doing. Also, you know, again, many of whom, many of you are, are here um, who worked on seller, um, and the FFE1 and Matroshka side. And then I wanted to look at what the Library of Congress has been doing with FAGI, with JPEG 2000 and, and MXF. And what I learned really early on in, in an interview um, was that um, I was operating under misapprehension early on. I thought the seller work, part of what the seller work was doing was creating a particular profile that used FFV1 and Matroska, but, but no, they're actually um, going a little bit deeper than that and creating, uh, taking these things and actually turning them into standards, whereas, you know, FAGI, as we know, is making a, an application uh, specification for their implementation. So I realized that what I was doing wasn't an apples-to-apples apples kind of comparison, and I was going to have to broaden out the uh, MXF and JPEG 2000 side to match what kind of um, what I was reviewing of what Seller was doing. And so what I've been trying to do now is, is kind of start to make inroads and, and get contacts in the SMPTE community so I can learn a little bit more about how MXF uh, and JPEG 2000 have been developed in the uh, video preservation realm. So that's part of where the work is now. Um, and right now I'm collecting a lot of public-facing documentation on top of doing interviews. So guidance documents, blog posts, professional publications, a lot of, again, a lot of people in the room have written stuff that I'm taking a look at. I'm also transcribing and coding my interviews. So I'm looking at the interviews and kind of turning them into data points so I can kind of compare what people are saying and kind of learning you know, more about, about how the work has been done, particularly on the seller side, because that's really where I focused so far. And that'll continue until I reach a point of what we call saturation. And saturation is basically where, you know, we're not, the researcher, in this case me, is not really learning a lot of new things from the interviews. We've reached a point of saying, okay, I think I've kind of gotten everything that I can out of this particular element of the work, um, which I don't think I'm anywhere near yet. And again, the site visits and the observation will happen in the spring. And I'll probably be contacting people for follow-up interviews, you know, and through the course of any kind of work like this, you realize that you're going down one direction and maybe it's not the greatest direction and you kind of have to change course or new developments happen. And that's kind of the beautiful thing about this research is that there's so many new developments happening in the open source realm, particularly with, with the seller work. Um, and so the work will kind of have to change and shift a little bit over, over time with that. And then, of course, writing. And then I plan to defend the work and deposit sometime in spring or summer of 2019. So a little under two years, year and a half to two years, I'll transition to, to soon to be doctor and then perhaps I'll actually become doctor. 
so just a, a so that's basically what the work is. Um, but I, there's a couple of notes I want to say about what the work is is not. And it's absolutely positively not about determining or helping someone to determine what standards or implementations of standards are better than others. It's really not, <laughs> sorry, that's really not what the, what the work is. Um, uh, absolutely positively not about which development group or groups is better than some other one. That, that's really not, um, I'm not trying to create any kind of a comparison of who's, who's more effective or anything like that. I'm just trying to look at these different groups and, and determine kind of how they work and um, uh, in a kind of an in inductive way. This, you know, this is not deductive work. I'm not starting with a particular thesis or, or something that I want to prove. I'm starting kind of the other way, which is the kind of theses and things that I'm, that I'm discovering in the work are, are kind of yielding themselves up to me as I'm doing the work. You know, so it, in a way, it's, it's a little looser than that. Uh, so this is about how groups operate and how and why the standards are or are not being implemented. And so um, I have a bit of uncertainty. I think it's, uh, it's kind of a fun uncertainty about where exactly the, the, the work is going to go. And to me, that's, that's the beautiful thing about the work. So if you'd like to participate, this is my email. I would really like to talk with you. Um, if you're involved in any kind of video digitization standards or specification development, and uh, I'm very excited to be here and actually get to meet and, and kind of put faces to, to voices that I've talked to on Skype. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. I'm happy to take your questions. Sorry, un unfortunately, we're running a little bit time for, tight for time. Okay. So um, if anyone's got any questions, just like write them down, remember them. and Write them down, remember them, email me. Yeah. Um, thanks very much, Jimmy. Yeah. Um, so now I'd like to introduce Ashley Bluer, um, who's going to speak about spec writers. We are just like you, sort of. Um. <coughs> you use reveal. Yeah, yeah, of course you have. Yeah. So you have to set it up. Sorry, I um, I got my. We actually have about. Five minutes for questions oh. for Jimmy. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Maybe while we're getting set up here, um, we can take some questions. I'm up here. <laughs> questions for me. So uh, we got some feedback just that it was difficult to hear on the live stream when people didn't have the microphones. Um, oh, yeah, so sorry, Jimmy, I'm going to go back down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm really sorry about this. No, it's just been actually Hello, it was it was me. I think Ian Richardson. Um, Hi, just Ian. on the, if I understood the the question about quality that you're trying to investigate, um, personally, I think you're not going to get a straight answer because we have some engineering metrics of visual quality, but none of them even begin to approach what the kind of the human perception of video quality. So I think that, to me, that's, that's still a, a big open question. Others may disagree. No, that's a beautiful thing for PhD work. I don't want straight answers. <laughs> I like things that are complicated. <laughs> run, run. Dave. Sure. Hi, Jimmy. Um, hi, Dave. Hi. hi. Uh, so from experience in the, the, my question's about the kind of quality issue too, because from my experience in the seller work uh, with Matroska and FFV1, it, it doesn't feel like we have discussions about quality that often. I mean, often we are discussing some pretty ridiculously made files, but mm -hmm. we're discussing is this valid or not? Is the language right. clear enough to tell if this insane thing is following the rules or not. So the issue of quality, I feel like, would be maybe more so belonging in the creation of recommendations built upon the standards rather than the standards themselves. But, yeah. uh, but I'm curious, like, what was the instigator to add, add this into your research project? Like, what, what was it that led to quality being one of the main research questions? I think partially just from my own background. So. 
I'm a, I'm a doctoral candidate, I'm an instructor, but I'm also an archivist on campus. And one of the things that I have taken out of a lot of the meetings I've had as an archivist is quality. The term quality just kind of kept popping up. And I thought, hmm, I wonder what people mean by that. You know, and I would kind of interrogate that a little bit. And so I thought, started thinking, well, you know, I have my own suspicions about what quality means in, uh, in, in my realm of being an archivist on campus. And in most cases, it was, um, it, it wasn't really so much that, that does it validate, but just that we are digitizing to the limits of our ability to, um, to store the thing. So is it, you know, is it uncompressed? Well, I guess if it's uncompressed, then I can say that um, it's the highest quality that we can possibly make, right? So, so I'm thinking, I, I wonder if there's, I wonder what the conversations in the standards development rooms, I wonder what they mean by quality. I wonder, I wonder if everyone's just on the same page. Everyone's just immediately just kind of like, well, if you're participating in a conversation and in an FFV1 development um, standards meeting, you're probably kind of all on the same page about, you know, does it, does it check, you know, does it, will it, will the file properly validate against some kind of a checker? Well, okay, well then we're all on the same page and, and it's really not that big of a, a disparity. Or are the people who are coming into it thinking, well, you know, I think of quality, when I think of quality, I think of something else. So I started thinking, hmm, this might be kind of an interesting thing to start asking. And if at the end of all the research, it's basically everyone's kind of on the same page, well, okay, that's diagnostic too. Thank you very much. Um, sorry again for the con confusion. Um, Ashley, please, thank you so much. <laughs>